while reading part two of the tradition and individual talent i was surprised to see t.s eliot making some reference to a chemical reaction what is the relevance of this scientific chemical reaction with arts and humanities i would request dr sanjay mukherjee to throw some light on this particular chemical reaction and what is its relevance in this essay on literary theory and criticism this indeed is very interesting in fact this essay becomes one of the very interesting essays because early in the 20th century it then tries to bring in the 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 element of science and the rigor of science into humanities and arts that too into something which is such an abstract thing like the creative process now let us try to understand this the equation that T.S. Eliot refers to is the the in the laboratory the formation of sulfuric acid which is our H2SO4 now in order that sulfuric acid forms it requires the ingredients sulfur trioxide so3 and water but what is of great importance that this entire equation will not take place if there is no catalyst now the catalyst during his time was the catalyst platinum today in later half of the 20th century another element called vanadium is being used but at at the time when Eliot is mentioning this is a strip of platinum that has to be there in the reaction otherwise this will not form now what does he say about this reaction and how does he liken this reaction to the mind of the poet the creative mind which is the man who suffers and the mind that creates are different if we read the essay and this is the distance that a poet has to create according to Eliot the unaffected mind that records everything the unified sensibility of emotion and intellect combined and the harmony of the, the, the nearness as well as the distance that one has to create in this now it is interesting that the creative process since long if you look at plato in our earlier units plato thought that poets create through a grip of frenzy aristotle deferred and he says no poets make something they create something dryden in his preface to annus mirabilis which is a very significant preface for dryden as a critic he captured the creative process in three different stages first is the invention that is the poet must come up with the idea second is fertility once the idea the nutshell is there how fertile is the poet to keep up to the subject and the third is the clothing that is the outer garment the use of language the ornamentation the rhyme etc etc that is that comes as the outer garb for this now interestingly dryden does not mention how this invention takes place we come to wordsworth and try to get an idea that the invention perhaps takes place in a spontaneous outburst spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings which the poet then recollects in tranquility goes back to that emotion and recreates it on a page now by the time we come to Eliot we come to the second decade early 20th century by then science has predominated over humanities even over philosophy science presents knowledge and it is then the responsibility even of the creative artist as well as critical 
critics and teachers like say I.A. Richards they also think how to merge humanities and the sciences or in in other words how to explain arts through sciences and that is what T.S. Eliot attempts to do here through the through the equation the third small part that we have in the essay this is in three parts the, the third part presumably the mind is something more divine and unaffected this is how there is an epigraph in Greek presumably the mind is something more divine and unaffected this is Aristotle's lecture on the soul where he says how this mind is and that is the epigraph with which T.S. Eliot I mean closes the essay in, in, a, in a way that the short third section of tradition and the indiv individual talent so you can see the unaffected mind like the strip of platinum is actually being mentioned by Aristotle so here is the classicist what later on Eliot would describe himself as a classicist here is the influence of the classical minds on our very very modern high modern Elliot.